What's the difference between 24-bit scans versus 48-bit scans? Find out after watching this video. Here's what you'll learn today. First, you'll get an up-close comparison between 24-bit and 48-bit scans. Then you'll learn when should you use 24 or 40-bits when scanning. And also, if you ever tried scanning and they, your scanner won't let you use 48-bits, you'll learn why. And also, you'll get a non-technical way to understand bits and bytes with as little math as possible. Also, as a bonus, you'll get a scan bit system to help you decide when to use 24 or 48 bits when scanning. All right, ready? Let's go. The first thing you got to know is that bits have nothing to do with resolution or DPI. When I first started scanning, I had no idea what bits were. I thought they had something to do with resolution. But after 10 years of scanning for a living, I figured it out. Bits have nothing to do with resolution. Bits are about color. So let me show you an easy way to know what a bit is. Once you know this, then you'll know when it's best to use 24 or 48 bits when scanning. And you won't be wasting your time with your scan project. Let me show you an example when I say that 48 or 24 bits have nothing to do with DPI and they all have to do with color. So, your digital photos are made up of three channels. Let me show you. There's a channel 1, which is red. There's channel 2, which is blue. And then there's channel 3, which is green. Now, when you put all these three channels together, you get your complete image. So, in other words, when you add channel 1, 2, and 3, you'll get a full colored image. So, now what? What does this have to do with 24 or 48 bits when scanning? Well, when you scan at 24 bits, you're telling your scanner to put in 8 bits of color per RBG channel. Let me show you what I mean. The red channel has 8 bits, the blue channel has 8 bits, and the green channel has 8 bits for a total of 24 bits. Now, when you use 48 bits, you're telling your scanner to put in 16 bits of color per channel. Again, red gets 16 bits, blue gets 16 bits, and green gets 16 bits for a total of 48 bits. The reason why I want you to know all this technical stuff with RBG channels and colors is because it's important. And later on, when I show you all the other stuff, everything will make sense. So let's keep going. So what does a 24-bit scan versus a 48-bit scan look like? Well, let's do a comparison. When you scan at 24 bits, you're going to have less bits per channel. And when you have less bits per channel, you have less colors to work with. When you scan at 24 bits, your scanner can use 16 million different types of colors to fill that one pixel. Only one color can fill that one pixel. And your scanner can only use 16 million colors to fill that pixel. Now, when you use 48 bits, your scanner can use 2 to the power of 48 different colors to fill that one pixel. I have no idea what 2 to the power of 48 is, but it's a big number. It's way bigger than 16 million. Again, only one color can fill that pixel but your scanner can pick from 2 to the power of 48 when you use 48 bits to fill it. I know it's a little technical right now, but again, everything will make sense pretty soon. Let's look at it at a different angle. This will make more sense. The more bits per pixels you have, the more different gradients of colors your scanner can pick from, meaning your image will look more smooth. Here's what I mean by smoother color gradient. Notice how when the color changes in this 24-bit scan, it looks blocky. So when it goes from one color to the other, it looks less smooth. But in the 48-bit image, the gradient is a lot smoother. The reason why the 48-bit image is a lot smoother and more gradient is because at 48 bits, remember, your scanner can use 2 to the power of 48 different colors to fill that one pixel. The more colors it can pick from, the more smoother the image will be. This is one big advantage of why using 48 versus 24 bits is better, is because your scanner will have a lot more colors to work with and your images will look a lot smoother. But there's a problem. Let me explain. So it makes sense to scan at 48 bits all the time, doesn't it? Your images will look better, it will have more colors, and the gradients will look a lot smoother. But like I said, there is a big problem. Let me show you. The first problem with scanning at 48 bits is our monitors suck. First off, most of our monitors only display at 24 bits anyway. So if you scan at 48 bits, your monitors won't even display them at 48, bit, 48 bits. They'll be dumbed down to 24. Here's an analogy to help you understand what I'm talking about. If you try to play a 1080p movie on an old standard definition television, it won't be displayed at 1080p. It will be dumbed down to whatever resolution that TV is. Same with 48-bit scans. 
Our monitors and computers can only display at 24 bits. So even if you have a 48 bit scan, it will be dumbed down to 24 bits. Let's move on to problem number two, and that is you can't save JPEGs at 48 bits. So you load up your scanner, but your scanner software won't give you the option to use 48 bits. Why? Well, remember how I told you that JPEGs have three channels and they're only eight bits? They're limited to that. You can't go any higher. That's why you can't use 48 bits with JPEGs. So now that you know that our monitors and computers can't display 48 bit images and you can't save JPEGs, as 48 bits. So when is it a good time to use 48 bits? Let me show you. That's next. So when is scanning at 48 bits a good idea? Printing. If you try to print a 24-bit JPEG, you're going to see that gradient effect. Remember how the colors look blocky between one color from the other? Well, if you try to print a JPEG, that's exactly what you'll see. However, if you print a 48-bit image, you won't have this problem with the blockiness and the gradients will be a lot smoother. So even though your monitor and your computer can't display at 48 bits, a printer can. That's why you need all those colors to fill in those pixels. The more colors you have to fill those pixels, the more smoother and higher quality your pictures will be. That's why if you ever go to a professional print shop, they'll always recommend a TIFF or RAW image. A JPEG is too small file size and you'll get that gradient effect. They don't care if it's 4000 DPI or 300 DPI. All they care about is if it's a RAW or TIFF image and it's above 50 megabytes. The more megabytes it has, the more colors that print shop can use and the better the quality your images will be. Next, I want to give you a system to help you decide when to use 24 or 48 bits. I call it the scan bit system. Let's do that next. Number one is, will you be printing your scans bigger than 4 by 6? If yes, use 48 bit TIFF scans. Remember how I showed you that 48 bits has a smoother color gradient? If you reprint your scans bigger than 4 by 6 and they are JPEGs, you will get this choppy color gradient look. You'll get high quality pictures if you use 48 bit TIFF scans and print those. Number two is, will you only use your scans on monitors, websites, or tablets? If yes, use 24-bit JPEGs. Remember, every monitor displays only at 24 bits. So even if you scan at 48 bits, you can't see the difference because our monitors are limited to 24-bit. Also, a 48-bit scan will be around 100 megabytes. Think about that. 10 scans will be about one gig. And a 100 megabyte image file is very slow to load on your computer. Plus, forget about using RAW or TIFF scans on the web. They're way too big. Number three is, if you want to future-proof your old slides, negatives, and photos, then use 48 bits. Okay, so you know that your monitor can't display at 48 bits, but what if in the future they will? Or maybe you don't care that a single scan is 100 megabytes and you have a lot of storage space. Or what you can do is scan all your images at 48-bit TIFFs, back those up, and then make a copy at JPEGs so you can use them on your website or computer or share them over the internet. If you're a geek like me, that's what I do. I scan everything at 48 bits because I never know what the future will come up with. And then I make a copy at JPEGs so then I can easily share them online or do whatever I want with them. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Conrad. And if you want more free scanning tips, please visit howtoscan.ca.